What's up guys, John here from Titan. And I get the question a lot, how do I switch over to be a Titan Medical Center patient if I'm already on hormone replacement therapy or medical weight loss program with another medical provider or clinic? It's a real easy and simple process, okay? And maybe you're one of these people that you're not getting the results that you wanted to, you don't feel as good as you think you could, you don't look as good as you think you could, or you might just think, you know what, uh, I'm just not happy with where I'm at. Okay, and we get this a lot, okay? We get a lot of people that bridge over or come over from other clinics or other medical providers. And the process is very simple and very easy. So I'll just explain some of the main points. So as long as we have blood work and the test that we require within 60 days, we can use those labs for you and just set you up with a medical provider, the consultation, where they go over those labs, go over, you know, why you're switching over possibly, your medical history, your family history, you know, maybe if you're still having symptoms, and go over a personalized treatment and regimen with you, okay? Next thing is, is if you're already on testosterone replacement, you don't have to stop your testosterone to switch over. We don't want you to crash your levels, but we do have to make sure that it is prescribed by a medical provider and filled in the United States with a U.S. licensed pharmacy, okay? Just to make sure that it's the right medication that was prescribed to you and it's legitimate, okay? So after that, that's really simple and really easy. All you have to do is just fill out the new patient paperwork, you share a medical provider, as long as we have labs within 60 days of the tests that we require, we can utilize those labs. If not, no worries. We can set you up with labs anywhere in the United States. So at that point, if you need new labs, we can help you out. And we have the most inexpensive lab tests in the country. So I promise you guys, we'll help you out. We'll get you feeling good, looking good, and performing the best you possibly can. I'm John from Titan. Please contact us, 727-389-3220. Check out the website, www.titanmedicalcenter.com. I appreciate it, guys. And we want you to be a part of the Titan Medical Center family. How's it going folks? It's Cass, Titan Medical Center nurse practitioner. Wanted to talk to you guys today about one of our wonderful therapies, Titan's Fat Burner ECA Stack Plus. This therapy consists of three main ingredients, ephedrine, which increases the metabolism of the body by increasing burning of stored fat. Also, Caffeine. Caffeine is a great psychostimulant that increases your mental clarity, your ability to focus, and increase energy levels throughout the day. Aspirin. Aspirin is a therapy that will increase the body's ability to burn stored belly fat by an enzyme, AMPK. In addition to these three wonderful ingredients, it also consists of B12 and chromium. B12 will help increase natural energy levels and help you burn fat and chromium can help decrease cravings for salty and sweet foods. A lot of my patients, friends, family members, and peers come to me and ask me, hey Cass, can we use the ECAs to help with not only burning fat and increasing energy levels, but as a pre-workout? And the answer is yes, you can. Taken 30 to 40 minutes before your training session, this can dramatically increase your focus, your energy levels, put you in a good position to burn body fat. So if you're interested in learning more about our ECA therapy, give us a call at 727-389-3220. We would love to help you achieve your goals. So once again, guys, stay strong and stay healthy. What's up guys, John here from Titan, and today I wanna to give you guys some tips of what not to do before you go work out or do strenuous activity, okay? So everybody always talks about things they should do and what you should do, but there's definitely some things that you should not do or that will give you a negative effect on your workout. Let's talk about them, they're very common. I think you guys will all like, 
you know, like say like, you know what, that's me in some circumstances, I guess, right? So the first one is, is not to eat a huge meal before you go and work out. Right. Now, it's okay to eat before you go work out, have a protein shake, right? You want your body to have some protein in there, maybe some branched in amino acids, some different things, okay? So it's good to do, but you don't want to just, you know, stuff yourself, just eat as much as possible, you're like, oh, I'll blur it out. If it, one, it's, it's a lot harder. Your body is in a slower metabolism state at that point. The other thing is, is you get tired, right? That, that's one thing, when we get full, think of holidays, when you just stuff yourself full of these different turkey, ham, chicken, whatever it is, you're gonna get full and that's what you're gonna feel. You're gonna feel full and you're gonna feel, you know, set and you wanna go get some sleep. So it might make you tired. So this is definitely something you wanna stay away from. Don't overeat before doing activity or the workouts, okay? I promise you, you guys will be good. The second thing is, don't overdo it on pre-workouts or stimulants. This is a very, very common one. And let me give you an example. Some people get pre-workouts and usually it's one serving size and that serving size of, let's just say caffeine, can be anywhere from 200 milligrams to 400 milligrams per serving. That means per scoop. Now, some of these people take two, three, four scoops. That's way too much as far as caffeine goes. You're overdosing this caffeine. And caffeine, you know, by legal description, is a drug, okay? It's, it's not a bad drug, but it's something that you don't want to overdose on because it gives you negative side effects. You can get jitters, heart palpitations, nausea, uh, your stomach, so having to go to the bathroom, in the gym bathrooms before you go work out uh, is, is not really optimal, I guess, or not really uh, the place you want to be in. Or maybe you're, you do, I don't know. But <laughs> it's something, a place that I would not like to do. And I used to pre do pre-workouts back in the day. I don't do them anymore. I do Hercules Potion or ECA Stack Plus, and I get no feeling like that. But there are a lot of people out there that still use these different things. So I want you guys to be aware of this. Don't do it. It will mess up your workout. You might not feel good, okay? That's not gonna give you an optimal state to work out the way that you want to to get you the optimal results that you're looking for, all right? Third thing is, don't go home before you go to the gym. Don't get off half. If you have to work, it's totally understandable. We all have to work every day, right? We gotta provide a life, you know, a livelihood. We gotta take care of our families. This is first priority and any means necessary, especially with me. But if you get off track or you, you make an excuse of where you need to go or what you need to do, before that gym time, you have to set it as an appointment, schedule it in, whatever it is, you need to do that. Unless somebody's dying in the hospital, right, or you're hurt pretty bad, you need to go. And you need to get it done, and then you can get out of there and, and you can go take care of whatever you need to afterwards. So schedule it in, don't have any distractions, and a lot of people, if they do go home, they get real comfortable, like, oh, you know, I'll just go tomorrow, right? I've been there, I know exactly how it is. So. Don't do that. I promise you, you'll have a better successful rate of going to the gym, having a better activity, okay, and getting yourself better results. So this is just some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that I want to share with you guys to hopefully help you guys out. So I'm John from Titan. i got a ton of these different videos coming your way to help you guys out. So stay tuned. I'll be back with a lot, lot more. Thanks, guys. Hello folks, my name is Cass, one of the nurse practitioners at Titan Medical Center. Today I want to speak to you about Hercules Potion. Some of the key ingredients, L-citrulline, L-arginine, these increase vasodilation, help you with the focused pump when you're training and exercising. L-carnitine, which helps fat metabolism, can help you lose weight. In addition to that, has glutamine, proline, lysine, which also help with recovery, antioxidants, decrease muscle soreness. It also has NAC, taurine, and ornithine. These all help with making your workouts longer and more productive, and also anti-aging properties as well. So I wanted to talk about collateral circulation pertaining mostly to the heart. So the heart is fed blood through vessels. Now when there is a blockage, it's called a heart attack or an occlusion. So if this were to happen, blood cannot be sent to the heart and the tissue can be damaged. 
However, we have something called collateral circulation, which are micro vessels that can feed the heart and supply some oxygen and blood to the heart, which can buy you time, potentially to get to the hospital and get help from a doctor. Can we make it better? Can we improve it, make it stronger? The answer is research shows you can. This is achieved by training to failure heavy exercise and with using a product like Hercules Potion you can train harder and potentially improve your collateral circulation and possibly develop new ones. So not only can Hercules Potion help you look good, feel good and train strong but you can also potentially help yourself later on in life if you were to have a heart attack. If you're interested in learning more about Hercules Potion and other Titan Medical Center therapies, please give me a call. I would love to hear from you and help you achieve your goals. I can be reached at 727-389-3220. Stay strong and stay healthy. What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner just for you guys. And at Cupid's Corner, if you guys don't know or haven't tuned in before, we like to cover some tips and tricks to help you guys, you know, maybe reignite that relationship flame, you know, get that relationship back on track or set you up for a very, very successful relationship in your future possibly. Yep. So gathering all these tips and tricks through the years, life experience, and, and, you know, talking to our friends too, because, you know, we get some good feedback from them or problems that they're going through or family members and stuff like that, you know, and, and kind of just blend it all in. So you guys get all the good information that you guys need. No more guessing, uh, no more, you know, what maybe should I, should I do in this situation? What can I do in this situation? Give you some options. We're gonna lay it out for you guys. And uh, this was some things that maybe you guys shouldn't be doing, right? So this one is, is, the name of this segment should be be competitive but don't be in competition with your partner mm -hmm. all right so what does that mean that means that listen whatever we do we should definitely be competitive whether it's your job whether it's a sport Dave and Busters you always want to be your best yeah. right and you know you guys can compete with anybody else out there you guys can compete with co-workers friends family you know when it comes to your partner you guys can be competitive in some things like we we're talking about maybe Dave and Busters you go there and you're playing air hockey or one of the shooting games, one of the racing games. Always competitive. Right? Always. You, you should it want to be competitive. It makes it fun. You, you know, and, and that should be a good spirit. You know, some people are like, oh, I, I'm not really competitive. I don't care if I win or lose. You know, or, is, that, is that real? Or some of the guys that are out there, right? They get mad if their girl wins. Oh, don't be a sore loser. Or, or some of the guys out there let their girl win. Now, and that's okay. But don't do that like on purpose because. Yeah then it's not competitive anymore. Yes, yes. <laughs> you want them to do their best. Even when you play your kids and stuff like that, yeah. you want to be the best you can so they can learn against you, you know? Exactly. If you keep doing lay downs or it's too easy for them, they're never gonna learn, they're never gonna get better. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. In my, in my personal experience, playing sports, you always want to play older people, more experienced people, that's how you get better. Mm -hmm. If you don't play people that aren't good, you aren't gonna get any better. True. So that's where, you know, that's where it comes in of being competitive. So you want to be competitive in what you do, right? But don't be in competition with your partner. And let's break that down. Just for an example, the other night we were out talking to one of our friends and you know, basically he had a breakup with his girlfriend and stuff like that. And it kind of went over like what the issues were. So the biggest issue was, was they were both event coordinators. Now the girl was, you know, she's very beautiful and stuff like that. So she probably gets a lot of attention and she does really good events. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, they're both <laughs> together now. So he does his own events. He started getting a little bit of limelight and then she started getting a little bit upset about it. Like, hey, listen, I'm the star, okay? And you're not. <laughs> Basically, that's what it broke down to. And the guy's like, well, listen, hold, hold on. I thought we were a team. Right. You know, we, I, I want you to do better. You want me to do better. Right. And that's really what relationships are all about. You want something that's gonna compliment you and something that's gonna make you better. You don't want anybody worse for you because it's gonna bring you down. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, that's the, in any relationship you are, a friend relationship or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a love relationship, romantic or business relationship yeah, in terms. True. You know, if you get into a business relationship <laughs> with somebody and they're not as good as you or they're, they're, they're horrible at what or they do. Or they're lazy. Or they're lazy, it's going to bring you down. They want to yeah. make you better. They want to be complacent or, 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 you know, be leeching off you per se. You don't want that either. You want something that's going to be compliment you, making you better. So in this relationship, the biggest thing between them was the competition factor where, you know, she thinks that she's a star. He's starting to do his own thing and come up and she's upset about it. Right. Instead, they should be like, all right, well, we're working as a team. Maybe we can even do events together and just blow them up even bigger. That would be smart. And we're, we're the couple together that does this. Right. And, you know, I, I use me and Sharice as an example for that because we're together. We are 50 50 in everything that we do, even though I'm the alpha and I rule. But I'm the alpha when I'm not around John. That's right. So, you know, and at that point, listen, I still listen to her. You know, I take her advice, you know, I, I take her feelings in consideration, uh, you know, and, and where she comes from as far as that goes or what she thinks should be the best. And uh, a lot of people don't do that. You, know, you it's, should, it's though. Other. I mean, really, you should, guys out there, I know that a lot of guys are old school, you know, like old school Greeks, you know, and or even Indian families or, you know, a lot of cultural background families that are yeah. high culture. Yeah. Um, a lot of the females, and this is the truth, you know, I mean, I know we're all coming up in the world. Okay, cool. Girl uh, power! <laughs> but let's be realistic in a lot of these other countries still, you know, I think Chinese, I think they still walk five feet behind their guy or whatever it was, or it used to be that way at some point. So, you know, it's nice to know that you have a significant other, your boyfriend, your husband, your fiance, whatever it is, that will listen to what you're saying, listen to your input, and won't just totally disregard it because you're a female, or it doesn't matter, or they're gonna make the final decision anyway, so you're totally irrelevant. That doesn't make your wife or you know girlfriend feel very good about the relationship. So it's, that's really important. I think that's been a big one with us, yeah. a and, big one. And I, listen, everybody's different, so there might be some women out there that, that want that, or vice versa, there might be some guys that want that. Yeah. So. That's fine if you're happy in what's going on. That's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, don't be in competition. If you want your, your relationship to be successful, if you are in competition with your partner in everything when it comes to your love life, business, uh, personal, I think there's going to be some issues there and you're going to get some friction down the road. It's coming. And it's going to, you know, it's going to make, basically make you guys split apart. People are going to get in your guys' ears. You're going to go ask about, you know, what, what should I do to your girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever it is. And at that point, they might give you some some unsolid advice. And that could be putting some things in your head that, you know, obviously that could ruin your guys' relationship or in the relationship at that point. Yeah. So it's really uh, big about you guys communicating. So if that is an issue, we always mention it, communication is yeah. key. Communication is key. I say it every episode. It, it really is, it really <laughs> is. So the more you communicate, the better the relationship's gonna be. You know, and that might mean that you guys stay together for a long time or listen, you guys come to terms and maybe it's just not going to work. Right. But at least you communicate and you guys can be amicable about things. And that's the big, big thing, I, I think, yeah. you know, that's out there. 100%. Um, you know, what goes right along with this and sometimes it can cause these issues too is, uh, yeah. is excessive jealousness. I, I might be. Excessive I jealousy. might be the... Uh the culprit of this topic here. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. So, and I'll, I'll use their example too, cause he did bring this up. So, you know, the girl, she's throwing her events and stuff like that. It's okay for her to hug the guys that came to the party or, or shake their hands. But when the guy was shaking the girl's hands that he knew and stuff like that, or we're coming to his events, it was a problem. Who is that? Who is she? How long have you known her? What's the deal with you guys? You know, all this, he's like, listen, he's like, I, I just met this girl passing, like, I have no idea, but it's just for the event. I have to go out and shake hands, kiss babies per se, yeah. and, you know, and be the face of this thing. I mean, that's what I do, right? And that's what she does, so she should understand. Yeah. But, you know, it's sometimes, you know, when people get a taste of their own medicine, they don't like it too much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, it's a big thing. They don't think about it until it really happens to them. Uh, and then when they go through that, then they're like, oh, this is what this feels like. Uh, I don't like this feeling at all. And that's when you guys should communicate again mm -hmm. about, about the things or problems. That's the resolution to this is communication. So when me and John first met, because I always like to give you guys great examples, you know, listen, I, honestly, I'm a very jealous person. Very, 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 very jealous. I mean, just very, I mean, even somebody just looking at him for more than they should, which is about three seconds. Um, you know, then I'm going to get upset. I am. So I, I've come a long way, you know, but when we first met it was the same kind of thing you know i mean he, we were still doing 
some individual things that you know required us to you know shake hands kiss babies out on the streets right but when we go out in town sometimes he'd be saying hi to somebody and i'm like okay well first of all i didn't get an introduction let's start there all right number two who is that okay so <laughs> Here we go with, you know, if you're going to say hi to somebody, just for guys out there, just as some tips for you guys. If you're going to say hi to a female, and let's just say your wife or girlfriend is a jealous person, and let's say they're not a jealous person. Then maybe this is just for respect purposes, okay? If you are going to hug and, you know, kiss someone and say hello and, you know, be friends, you should introduce that person to your significant other. Not, you know, stand in front of them and be like, you know, like now your back is to them and then you're talking to this other female and you're like... Hello, who is this? Well, uh, so uh, literally, I, when we first met, I, I would move him aside and be like, Hi, I'm Sharice. <laughs> and what's your name? Who are you? I'd love to know you. So that's how that went down. And that's true. Very, very true. Um, I've come a very long way and I've calmed down just a little bit. Um, a little bit. But, you know, it's big to communicate because I would tell him after that well when we first met i wouldn't tell him after i would actually tell him in the midst of and then we would get into an argument see we're real people we argue we get into big arguments about you know and this could be a whole nother topic but not to fight in front of other people that's, that's a, big a big one, one. do not, not fight in front of other people do not start arguments in front of other people if it's whatever it is just hold it tight go somewhere else in the car wait till you get home whenever to discuss it and i've learned that over the past 14 years now so um i've come a long way with that but you know i would tell him when i got home like hey listen you know i don't appreciate you know if you're if you do know and then a lot of times you know if you know this person why you didn't even introduce them to me you know and then he would be like well i don't even know her name you know i just and he, he was he was being honest about it most of the time but he was being honest about it you know and but i didn't even know this girl's name like i just you know she knew me from wherever at wherever promotion or we did a we did this event and you know in passing and i'm like okay well that's when you still introduce me because obviously she's saying hello to you so it it can make your significant other feel a little uncomfortable because they don't know if you really know them so how do you know them do you have any history with them did anything happen with this girl why is she looking at you like this why is she being all cute because i'm like that <laughs> <laughs> So that's just the truth. I'm being honest. I'm very straightforward for those of you that know me and then you don't, now you know. Um, but, you know, it's important that you communicate that you don't like that. And then they'll stop eventually, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, you know, and, and they'll stop and they'll, but, oh, wait, let me introduce my wife or my girlfriend. Like, this is Sharice. This is so-and-so. Um, and, you know, just go from there because it's important that you do that. It can really make your significant other feel uncomfortable. Um, especially in the beginning stages of your relationship where they don't know who your friends are. They don't know who you know or how you know them. It's true. Especially nowadays with social media and everything Oh like that. my goodness. Like when we first got together, luckily it was only <laughs> MySpace at the point. We might've had an upper hand because of that, it, actually. I, I, you know, it was just MySpace. So listen, as long as I was in the top eight, number one, I'm good to go. Yeah. <laughs> I made you go through his inbox too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Jealousy, I'm telling you, is terrible. I've come a long way. But so, he's he's helped me come that long way. And you know why? Because he makes me feel secure. That's right. And it's important to make your significant other. And this is for girls, too. I mean, you flaunt your stuff. You look cute somewhere. You guys are wearing a short dress, heels, boots. You're all done up and you're going out. And you go to dinner or you go to the club or you're going to wherever. You know, hold your hold the hand of your man you can have some or, sort of pda or you know just maybe even like put arms together you know because then people know you're together you know and then it, yes. it kind of diverts yes. some things that can possibly happen yes. it will divert that considering that if they see that you're together then it's just straight disrespectful if right. they come forward with right. whatever you know and i i do see out there like you know like some girls i'm just using an example guys can be the exact same way they'll be on their phones taking pictures out at an event looking like they're by themselves mm -hmm. like, and then even do the video and like when the video comes around to the other person the guy in the corner they like go up, up, up <laughs> high or, or to another angle just so they don't show them but they oh want to show God. like where they're at so listen this is this is like a red flag like why are you doing this like, are, you, are you scared to like show me in your video 
or, or you know show people that you have a relationship you know yeah. something like that you get cropped out of the photos guys you better start thinking you know and i know a lot of influence <laughs> out there that want that because they want the image of like listen i'm single so everybody likes him is attracted to them yeah you know because some people if they say listen i'm married or i have a boyfriend and it kind of detour my detours from their fans who knows but listen you're not being real with yourself you're not helping your partner's security level uh, you don't want them to be insecure, like she said, and you want to involve in these different things. So, mm-hmm. if you're with a person, you should be proud that you're with that person. And if you're not proud, then there must be something else going on, or some other alternative thing, or, or arrangement, because there's arrangements out there. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not, mm-hmm. I, I'm not judging that at all. If that's what it is, then hey, listen, God bless. Whatever uh, floats your boat. But if you're in a real relationship, it, it's good to show that your partner's there, right next to you, and other people. It will detour it does. possible future problems that you may have. Yeah. Now, on the flip side of that, I did I did see some other things out there where people are like, um, they don't want to post that they have a significant other because they don't want people DMing those people or trying to get in their inbox or try to wreck, wreck their relationship because they possibly could have had past problems with exes mm-hmm. right and then they're like oh i want to share this with this person oh, we'll, we'll see if this person really likes this person afterwards yes, right yeah. i mean it's crazy out there so yeah. i can see it on both sides but you, you know when it gets to a serious point your relationship you guys are serious let's say moving in or whatever it is you're past the dating point the honeymoon stage uh at that point you're gonna have to show that you got your partner you want to be proud so yeah. that, that's really what i agree about. okay yeah. so that's gonna sum it up for this <laughs> week's cupid's corner we appreciate all you for tuning in. We're loving the feedback. We're coming, uh, you know, up to a whole bunch of people that come up to us and oh like, my listen, God, I love it. we see your you show on Sundays. Me. Like here so, on see, ABC. It's huge. Every Sunday. It's huge. It's huge. And, uh, we're, we're really blessed and proud and we still can't believe it. So cool. you guys keep tuning in, showing us the love. We'll keep giving you guys some great tips and tricks to help you guys out. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday, 11 a.m. And if you don't have this on your cable, make sure you guys turn into YouTube or Facebook for the full show too as well. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you next week for another Cupid's Corner. Bye.